identifying whether something is a linear relation. So here we've got a word problem, and we want to know, is this linear? So the question is, a new car is purchased for $24,000. Every year, the value of the car decreases by 15%, and that value of the car is related to time. Let's make a table of values to help us sort out whether this is a linear relation or not. So here I've got my table of values. I've got the year or how, that we've owned the vehicle and the value of that vehicle. So when we start off, we're going to start off at year zero because that, that's our starting point. The value of the vehicle is $24,000. After we've owned the vehicle for a year, it's going to lose 15%. So essentially, it's going to keep 85% of its value. So $24,000 times 0 0.85 gives me a total value of $20,400. Now let's run through this for a couple more steps. Second year we've owned it. Now it's starting at a value of 20,400, because at the beginning of that year, that's what the value started at. I keep 85% of its value. So $20,400 times 0.85 gives me 17,340. Okay, so we've figured out over a couple of years the value of our vehicle and what it's worth at the end of every year. There is my independent variable, my x, and my dependent variable, also known as my y. I've added a third column to this a chart because I want to look at what is the rate of change. Over the course of a year, how much did it go, how much value did we lose? We're not going to put anything for the first year or at the start because we uh, it's got full value when we bought it. But when I go to my first year, in the first year we earned the vehicle, we lost $3,600 worth of value. That's how much the value of the vehicle went down. Now, if I go between the first year and the second year, so in the next year, it now lost $3,000. And sixty dollars, and in my last year, I go between years two and three. It lost two thousand six hundred and one dollars. That's what the value went down by. In this question, you notice how the rate of change is not always the same amount. It goes, it changes as time goes on. As time goes on, the car starts losing less and less and less value. If that rate of change is not constant, we do not have a linear relation. All right, let's look at another word problem. So here we've got the charges for an electrician. $75 flat rate. So that $75 gets charged just for them to show up to your house. And then they get $50 an hour after that. Is this a linear relation? So the main question is, is the rate of change constant? Now we have to take a look at this. We are comparing the total cost of service to time. So we're looking at cost as a function of time. So for every hour of work, the cost increases by $50. That's my rate of change. M equals $50 per hour. So if I've got a constant rate of change, it is a linear relation. Let's talk about how to determine whether an equation represents a linear relation. So there I've got an equation, y equals negative 3x plus 25. We have a table of values, and I've actually got a uh, graph as well. Let me figure, show you how we figure out those table of values. So you pick 
some x values and you run each of those through the equation and whatever it spits out will give you your y values. So how we do that, my equation is y equals negative 3x plus 25. Let's start with that x equals negative 2. So instead of negative 2, for the x, or instead of the x, we put in a negative 2. And I start clearing that out. y equals negative 3 times negative 2 gives me positive 6 plus 25. 6 plus 25, we are looking at y equals 31. That's how we got this number right here. And then we would do the same thing for the next one. To figure this one out here, we would get, start with the same equation, y equals negative 3x plus 25. But now instead of an x, we're going to put in a minus 1. So minus 3 times minus 1 gives me 3 plus 25. 3 plus 25 gives me 28. And that's how I got this number right here. And you can go through, you would go through it for all of them to get all of these numbers on the table of values. So once we've got the table of values, you can graph it and then check if it gives you a straight line. If I look at this, we have a nice straight line. That is a linear relation. If I move on and look down at this one, looking at the table of values, and you can see that it has been graphed, it is not a linear relation. If I try to put a ruler on that, I've got a curve. This one you can clearly see, not a linear relation. Over here, over here looking at this table of values, this equation is a little bit different. It doesn't actually have an x in it. It's only got a y. This is a special case. What that is saying is because there's no x in the equation, it's saying it doesn't matter what the x is, y is always going to equal 5. So if you notice here, when y is 0, y equals 5. When x is 1, y equals 5. When x equals 2, y equals 5. So it doesn't matter which x value we pick, y will always equal 5. I pull out my ruler, that's a line, in fact that's a horizontal line. Yes, it is a linear relation. Over here we have another special case, x equals 1. No y's in here. So what that is saying is it doesn't matter what y value we're looking at, the x always equals 1. If I bring a ruler up beside my graph, I've got a vertical line. That, it's straight, that's a linear relation. This is a special case because the uh, rate of change is infinite, but that is something to talk about more later. For our last set of examples, let's take a look at determining the rate of change of a linear relation from its graph. So here we've got a situation where we've got a water tank that holds 6,000 liters. The first graph says it's being filled at a constant rate, and the second graph seeing it's being emptied, emptied at a constant rate. So we're going to do it twice. It's essentially two separate questions. Uh, it asks us right off the bat to identify the independent and dependent variables. Well, the amount of water in the tank is going to depend on how much time has gone by. Uh, independent variable is always on your x-axis. So this is my independent. And this one is my dependent. Same thing over here. This is my independent. This is my dependent. Now let's take a look at the rate of change of each of those relations. Okay, let's start with this one, graph A, filling that water tank. I want you to remember that rate of change, M, equals rise over run. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two points off of this graph. Now look for two points that hit the grid perfectly. Now this is a fairly easy one because all the points hit the grid perfectly. I'm going to pick this one and that one. There's lots of other choices which should give you the same answer. So I've got a rise and I've got a run. I drew that triangle there. So when I take a look at my rise, first thing people want to say, well, that's a rise of three because that's three squares. No. It starts at a thousand and ends at four thousand. That's a rise of three thousand liters. When I look at my run, I'm going from here to here. So that's 20 minutes to 80 minutes. That's a run of 60 minutes. So when I put it into my rate of change, we are looking at a rise of 3,000 divided by a run of 60. 3,000 divided by 60 equals 50. Now, if I just look at a number, that number doesn't mean a whole lot to us. And one of the questions says, hey, what does that number mean? When you start putting units in there, that number now starts to mean something. So if I put my units in, 3,000, that was liters, because the tank went up by 3,000 liters, and it took it 60 minutes to get there. So when we put those units, transfer them over to our final answer, we've got liters per minute. So what that's saying is that tank is filling at 50 liters per minute. I'm going to do the same thing on graph B when we're emptying that water tank. I'm going to pick two points, and then you can pick any two points. I'm going to pick this one and that one. Same thing, I'm going to draw that triangle. I've got a rise and a run. So in this case, here is my rise, and there is my run. M equals rise over run. Now when I look at my rise, this one is a little bit different. It's going from 4,000 down to 2,000. So we've actually got a rise of negative 2,000. And let's put our units in right off the bat. The tank went down 2,000 liters. Down, got to put a negative on it. And our run goes from 20 to 40. So that is in 20 minutes. I do that 2,000 divided by 20, I get m equals negative 100, if I put my units on it, liters per minute. So if I, if I look at that, because it's a negative 100, it means the tank is emptying at 100 liters per minute. So every minute, the volume of the tank goes down by 100 liters.